Hi guys, this is a review of the lecture in lab eight associated with uh, microanatomy of the heart for histology. Uh, let's get started. So our goals are basically we're just looking at histology, uh, identifying cell types, uh, different layers of the cell wall, cardiac skeleton, um, heart valves, the chorda tendinae, cardiac muscles, McKinsey fibers, and then the rest of the parts of the conduction system, AV node, SA node, and bundle of hiss, which are from the lecture, not the lab. In particular, we're going to be looking at path slide from this region. Here we have the left atrium and left ventricle, and so uh, we'll be able to take a look. At, we'll be able to see a part of the valve that separates those two. All right, so let's just get to it. Um, we have this as our primary histology slide, and we are told that this is part of the wall and that we have the ventricle and an atrium. So the question is, uh, if we have a ventricle and atrium here, which is which? Well, we have to go to what we know about the heart overall, which is ventricles pump blood um, into the great vessels away from the heart. And the atrium is pumping blood to the ventricle, which is right next to it. So the ventricle needs to have more muscle um, to produce a greater blood pressure. And then the atrium you know, doesn't need as much. And so uh, right off the bat, we can see that this side of the slide over here has this really thick muscular layer, and this side has a relatively thin muscular layer. And so here we have the ventricle as a result, this is the atrium. All right, so then what if we're talking about, if this is the left side of the heart, is this the, and we're told that we have ventricle atrium in between those we know is going to be a valve. So what valve is on the left side of the heart? Well, this is the uh, bicuspid valve, aka the mitral valve. And then if we're dealing with a cross-section of the wall of the heart, well, what are the different layers of the wall of the heart? Well, let's just take a quick look. So we have, uh, this is a diagram you know, just from our lecture uh, cross-section of the heart. We can see that we have uh, really three main parts. We have the apocardium, myocardium, and endocardium. Endocardium is adjacent to the chambers of the heart. The myocardium is going to be made up of the cardiac muscle. And then we have the apocardium here, which is actually continuous with the uh, peri pericardial sac, the pericardium. Um, and it's going to be the visceral layer, right? That means the part that is in contact with the organ itself um, of the serious pericardium. So the visceral layer of the part of the pericardium that is adjacent to fluid. And that's true because we have the pericardic cavity here, which is full of pericardial fluid. So what are the parts of our heart wall? We have the epicardium on the outside. We have the endocardium on the inside next to the cavity. And then we have the myocardium um, with the myocytes in between. So looking at this slide, we can already start to identify things. Um, we have up here a uh, chamber of the heart, and uh, then down here we have the pericardial uh, sac. So uh, three is going to be our epicardium, one is our endocardium, and two is our myocardium. And so the question is, how do we know that this is the pericardial sac versus this is a chamber? Well, um, you know, the muscle is going to be more interior, so myocyte is like the middle part, right? But uh, you're, you're going to want it to be contracting the chambers, right? And so you can kind of see this is curved inwards. Uh, this is the chamber. And here we have part of uh, a valve separating the atrium and the ventricle. So kind of context clues there. But starting with the epicardium, uh, epicardium here, this is the third region, is where fat is stored. It itself has two layers. And the first one we can see here is the mesothelium. It's just simple squamous cells on the outside, very thin layer. Then uh, deep to that, we have the, the rest of it is the epicardial connective tissue. All right, so we'll go more into detail here, but again, this is the epicardium overall, which is continuous with the pericardium, also called the visceral layer of the serious pericardium. All right, the epicardium, uh, so we already touched on it, but the outer heart layer, and we said it's itself made up of two different layers. We have the mesothelium, which is just epithelial cells, uh, simple squamous in particular. Then deep to that, we have the epicardial connective tissue, and that's all of this. You can see there's a ton of adipose, adipose tissue, um, and it also has type 1 collagen fibers and elastic fibers. We also have uh, branches of coronary arteries, um, cardiac veins, and nerves can be found in the epicardial connective tissue, right? So here we have a vessel. Uh, here's an artery. Um, this is from our, this diagram is from a lecture. We can see here we have a thicker uh, mesothelium, and then deep to that we have our uh, epicardial connective tissue, and then our myocardium is below that. All right, so taking a look at the middle layer of the heart wall with myocardium, uh, it stains eso. Uh, philically, which again, just reminds I always like kind of forget something so basic. Uh, Esocinophilic is pink or red staining, basophilic is purplish staining. The myocardium is analogous to the tunica media, and ventricular myocardium is thicker. Again, why? Because we need a higher pressure. We're pumping the blood to the rest of the body in the case of the left ventricle, pumping it to the heart in the case of the right ventricle, whereas the atrium is just going from atrium to ventricle on either side. All right. Um, this image we can see so we have um, the uh, endocardium, uh, right? So endocardium here, myocardium here, myocardium here, endocardium here. So basically, the part that is clearly myocyte right, is our second layer, so right here, and which I think that one might extend further down, so right here overall, and overall straightforward, made up of myocytes, uh, muscle cells, right? All right, the image to the right has an oracle and a coronary artery, which is which? Well, uh, artery is right here, it's collapsed, um, and then here we can sort of zoom in, uh, you know, so smooth muscle along the artery. Here you can see that this has cardiac muscle, which we'll go over a little bit more in a second, but, uh, you know, you compare it to the myocardium in the left atrium here, and it's pretty clear that this is also uh, cardiac muscle, right? And so uh, the oracle uh, rests on top of the uh, atriums. The, so this is um, oracle right here. Okay, then we have, uh, taking a look at the cardiac muscle cells, we had some examples of transverse and longitudinal cross-sections. Um, if you're looking at a cardiac muscle cell, you know, how do we know that it's trans working at a transverse cross-section? Well, the hint is supposed to be these eosinophilic cyclings, aka dots in the cytoplasm. Um, and so if you're to zoom in, you can kind of see there's like little dots, um, and those are supposed to be the uh, myofibrils. Um, that make up the, the sarcomere, right? And so um, then you have the nucleus is centrally located, right? You can see it, they're not just all on the periphery overall. And then it's staining, you know, that pinkish red due to the actin and myosin that make up the, the sarcomere, right? This is part of the sarcomere. Okay, um, longitudinal cells, right? So this is our transverse, this is longitudinal over here. Uh, you can see that we have these 
dark bands separated by light bands. And specifically, we were told that the light bands are the I band from the sarcomere, right? And that kind of makes sense, right? Because we have thin filaments in the I bands when it's uh, elongated. And then the, the A band is our, our dark line, and that's really covering the A band, right? doesn't change in length due to contraction. The A band is the thick filaments, right? And so the thick filaments, it would make sense that they would show up as darker, right? So these dark lines are our A bands. The light in between them, the light bands are the I band. All right, so then um, we also have our intercalated discs, uh, and those have three parts, fascia adherens, desmosomes, and then gap junctions. And then of course we have uh, branching, and then uh, one to two nuclei that are central to the cells. All right, so taking a look at the intercalated disc, this is an image from the lecture, not from the lab, but it's important to know that there are three parts. Uh, in particular, we have the fossa adherens right here. And um, you can see that we have right, striation from sarcomere. Uh, this is a light band, so this is our Z band overall. And then at the end of the cell, we have our intercalated disc. And the fossa adherens is connecting the cardiac cells um, via junction binding to actin thin filaments. Our desmosomes connect two cells via desmin and uh, vitamin, uh, vi, mentin, uh, intermediate filaments, and those are located here. So the fossil adherence is a little bit wider, more prominent, and then our gap junctions are providing for the ionic communication and the coupling specifically for um, transmitting of action potentials. All right, so moving on, we have, uh, just taking a quick look at atrial versus ventricular myocytes, uh, specifically for EMs. Uh, here we have our atrial myocytes versus ventricular myocytes. Notice the difference in like thickness, right? So atrial myocytes tend to be uh, smaller, and they have a less elaborate T tubule system and more gap junctions. So smaller, uh, more gap junctions. The important thing to know that's not because again this particular information is from a lecture, not from the lab. Uh, the myocyte, the atrial ventricular myocytes, uh, will release a hormone, and the atrial myocytes will release uh, atrial natriuretic factor. All right, and so uretic factor should make you think kidneys, and then the ventricular cardiac myocytes will release brain natriuretic, again, kidneys, peptide, both of these are hormones. And so they're going to be stored in little granules in the cell. And so if you get, you know, something that's like, okay, well, here's clearly some sort of sarcomere, there's little granules, and then we get a question that says, you know, what are the granules? So then the question becomes, is this a atrial cardiac cell or is this a ventricular cardiac cell? And I don't think you could tell um, just based on, you know, this particular image, I think we'd have to be told, um, unless we had some way of, of comparing um, like additional context, such as ventricular myocytes are, are thicker. Uh, but anyways, the AMF and, and BNP uh, stimulate the kidney to secrete sodium and water in urine and function to maintain blood volume. All right, so excrete sodium and water in urine and maintain, in the urine, and maintain blood volume. All right, so then looking at our final layer, the innermost layer of the heart, aka the endocardium, um, this is going to be thicker in the atrium than in the uh, ventricle. The ventricle, again, is going to be dominated by the myocardium, and so it'll be thicker in the endocardium. Uh, the endocardium is the layer that contacts the blood in the heart chamber. It's analogous to the tunica and tema. Um, it has two layers overall, just like the epicardium. Its first layer is just a simple layer of uh, simple squamous cells. And specifically, Dr. Braun made the point that our uh, we need to have anywhere there is connective tissue that is going to be in contact with or near blood, it needs to be covered by a layer of epithelium. And endothelium is a form of epithelium, right? And so we have connective tissue covered by simple squamous cells. And if it's not there, then the blood is going to start to clot. So we don't want that to happen. So we need to have our endocardium covered with a layer of epithelial cells such that we don't have blood clotting. All right, and so this is made up of two layers. Again, outermost layer is our endothelium, simple squamous cells. Deep to that, we have the endocardial connective tissue. All right, so basically, it's easy to remember the epicardium on the outside has the mesothelium made of simple squamous cells. And then deep to that, it has the epicardial connective tissue. And the endocardium also has an outer, or it has its first layer is endothelial, uh, the endothelium uh, made of simple squamous. And then deep to that, it has the endocardial connective tissue. So you, hopefully you can see that the naming is, is pretty much the same. All right, um, or like it's kind of the same format or structure. All right, um, that said, the endocardial connective tissue is gonna be made of fibroblast collagen um, and elastic fibers, so type 1 collagen. Um, and then we have the deepest part of, so this is, this part right here is the endocardial connective tissue. And then the part that's deepest, uh, adjacent to the myocardium is sometimes referred to as the subendocardial layer. All right, and this is just another picture. We have the endothelium, and then deep to that, we have our endocardial uh, connective tissue. All right, um, then just taking a look at the ventricular endocardium, because we said it's not as thick as the atrial one, you can see that here we have the endocardial connective tissue, uh, the deep layer of the endocardium, and then we have the uh, top layer, the endothelium, which is adjacent to the blood. All right, then we have the cardiac skeleton, which we went over. Um, basically, the function of this is here, uh, separate the musculature of the atrium from the ventricles, um, function as a site of origins or points of insertion of the cardiac muscle, stabilize the valves, limit the diameter of the valves, and then prevent the spread of electrical impulses outside of the, or keep it within the conducting system, all right? And then we have really three main components, right? You can see that we have four rings, and these four rings are called the annuli fibrosi, annuli fibrosi and that's shown with B here. Then we have, in between those, those are linked together by triangular portions, um, labeled with C, called the tri -hunga fibrosi. And then finally, you have this part right here, which extends into the um, atrial ventricular septum, um, and that's going to anchor the cardiac skeleton. All right, so we are over here, which means we're going to be looking at um, annually fibrosi, which is one of the four rings stabilizing the valve. And we know which valve because we're already told this is between the left ventricle and the left atrium. All right, so bicuspid valve, uh, part of the skeleton is right here. So we're dealing with the annuli fibrosi. And then how do we ID this? Well, uh, we have to kind of try our best to zoom out. But if you follow the sort of eosinophilic staining here, um, you can see it's like kind of darker here, darker here. And then this is like a lighter patch. And so what we're dealing with is a cross section of this ring. So this circle right here, where it meets, is the annuli fibrosi. 
All right, so right here. And then we have um, extending off of it is a part of the uh, mitral valve, and then you have the corny tendony up here, All right? But we can see we have some uh, cardiac muscle from the myocardium is leading in and anchoring into this part right here. And so that should be one of the hints. If we trace the uh, eosinophilic staining um, to a slightly lighter region, that slightly lighter region is most likely going to be part of the cardiac skeleton. Okay, and then in particular, if we zoom in, right? So if I zoom in on this, it's hard to tell, but this is a zoomed in picture. Um, this is a very irregular connective tissue, right? But it's also, you can tell that it's, it's dense. So this is made up of uh, dense, irregular connective tissue. And that's gonna be the case for the cardiac skeleton in general, dense, irregular connective tissue. All right, so um, the bicuspid valve, again, we have the annulate fibrosi here, and that's, you know, along this ring of the tricuspid, or the bicuspid valve, all of the valves have the annulate fibrosi um, around it, right? So annulate fibrosi is a ring of dense, irregular connective tissue. Um, and so it should extend, right? The valve should come in, it's extending, right? All of this material is extending from this ring, right? And so if this is a part of the valve, then you can trace this dense, regular connective tissue, just like we did with the muscle fibers into um, this lighter standing region, uh, which is the uh, annually fibrosi. Okay. And then one thing to notice. So first it's dense, regular connective tissue. You zoom in, right? Um, it's pretty irregular, uh, but it is, is dense. Um, it also has, right? We are looking over here at this was part of the left atrium. This is the myocardium. This is the chamber. So this is the endocardium. And you can see that this actually has endocardium on it as well. And so again, the point that was made was that uh, if you're having connective tissue near blood, it needs to be covered by endothelium such that you don't have blood clotting. And so this, um, this valve is going to have uh, some endocardium on it, such that it can have the uh, endothelium, right? So it's going to be a thin layer here. And then deep to that, we have, this is the endothelial connective, or endocardial connective tissue. So layer one, layer two, and then this, this whole thing is our um, section of our bicuspid, aka mitral valve. All right, and then the chordae tendinae, you know, the chordae tendinae are basically attaching our valve to papillary muscle. And that is associated, that is right here. One thing to note, uh, it's continuous, right? Again, it traces down to the annulus fibrosis. Um, and so this is kind of actually not generally the case, right? You just look at this picture, the chordae tendinae are connected really to the uh, dense regular connective tissue of the valve itself. And so somehow we've got a cross-section that is allowing us to see uh, not just this part, uh, but it, the chordae tendinae matching up to this part. And so um, we might not always see it lead directly to a cross-section of the annulus fibrosis, but uh, one of the things to know is that the chordae tendinae, right, like a tendon, um, a tendon is made up of dense regular connective tissue, not irregular. And so the rest of the skeleton, the valve is irregular dense connective tissue. This, if you look at it, Right? You can see you know, continuous lines, it's wavy, but you can see continuous lines. Right? You can see the waviness in like a tendon if you uh, took your Achilles and you like, didn't have it stretched. You can see waviness there as well, but there are continuous lines. This is dense, regular connected tissue. All right, uh, again, and what's the point of the chordae tendinae? Prevent eversion. Uh, we don't want the valve to flip out backwards and let blood into, back into the atrium from the ventricle. All right, then uh, looking at the ventricle wall, I'm going to try to wrap this up. Uh, if we want to, right, the ventricle wall is contracting. A lot of this is myocytes, um, cardiac muscle. It's going to need, has high metabolic needs, right? A lot of contracting, it needs to produce a lot of ATP. We have you know, glycolysis, uh, citric acid cycle, uh, the electron transport chain, et cetera. It has a lot of metabolic needs. That means it's going to need a blood supply to it, right? And so um, you can find capillaries within the ventricular wall if you look for red blood cells. And so you can see one here, right? But then you can also maybe see a cross-section of different ones. Here's one. Um, these are continuous capillaries, um, not fenestrated or discontinuous. All right, uh, one other thing to note, you can sometimes see these brown pigments, right? There's some here, some here. They are located, uh, we're told they're perinuclear next to the nucleus. Uh, if you zoom in here, here's one, here's some. And these are basically accumulation of waste products that can't be eliminated from the cell for whatever reason, and they're present in older cardiac cells, all right? But they're called uh, lipofusion granules waste product, right? These brown staining granules near the cytoplasm, or near the nucleus, perinuclear. All right, we're almost done. Uh, the Purkinje fibers uh, are part, the last thing we look for in the lab, they're located in uh, the endocardium, um, and so remember the endocardium, again, is, it's got two layers. It has the outermost layer, the mesothelium, simple squamous, and then deep to that we have the endocardial connective tissue layer. And so the Purkinje fibers are going to be in this endocardial, the second layer, connective tissue layer. All right, they kind of look like adipose cells. Um, they are uh, modified cardiac muscle cells. They don't have T2 veals, which is like a test question. Um, they kind of look like adipose cells. They're evacuated, pale staining due to the storage of glyc glycogen. Um, and the difference is though, right, so over here we have adipose cells. Notice that we don't really see any cytoplasm. Over here we have our Purkinje fibers, and they do appear to have, you know, they're evacuated and pale staining like adipose, but you can see uh, cytoplasm on the outside, right? And so all of these are Purkinje fibers, modified myocytes. Um, they don't have T tubules, light staining, but you can see cytoplasm around them. And they do have myofibrils as well, which is going to contribute to that um, esosinophilic staining, the pink staining. All right, and then uh, they're larger than normal cardiac cells, right? This is pretty big up here. You have like a cardiac cell, you know, cardiac cells, um, generally pretty big, but again, has a pink ring, which is how you know they're not adipose. All right, and then here, again, Purkinje fibers are modified. Uh, muscle cells. And so here's a regular cardiac muscle cell. You can see the striations um, from the sarcomeres. And then here's the Purkinje fiber. And they do have um, myofibrils, but relatively few, but you can't see them uh, as well. All right. And then this isn't from the lab itself, but uh, we know that the pacemaker cell is the SA nodes. Um, it has automaticity. It's the fastest automaticity. So we consider these like the real pacemaker cells versus the AV nodes. But um, this is located in the right atrium. They typically surround a branch of the coronary artery. So here we can see right, the section is uh, SA nodes. Um, they're modified cardiac cells. They're spindle shaped and smaller than normal cardiac muscle cells. All right. So we have heard spindle shaped so much. And um, 
like for instance with fiberglass and just to clarify what that means it means wide in the middle and tapered at the ends okay and so like when we talk about fiberglass we're like well they look something like like this right like fiberglass are all kind of funky um but it's thick in the middle right so for our nodal cells you can see that it's a bit thicker in the middle we do have branching right because they're modified cardiac muscle cells um they do have intercalated discs um, and but they're technically spindle shaped because they're thick in the middle and not so thick on the ends, right? But spindle shaped, you can also think of it as like football shape, which I don't like that as like a way of saying it because does this look like a football? No, they don't. But technically, what spindle shape means, all right? They do have the intercalated discs, uh, they're less well developed than normal cardiac muscle cells. All right, AV nodes, we know that it goes SA to atrial and then to AV nodes, right? Then the bundle of his, then eventually to Purkinje and then ventricle. Uh, AV nodes are basically going to look like the SA nodes, uh, again, spindle shaped, um, but they appear to be a little bit more isolated and surrounded by more connective tissue. And so, right, compare this to this. Right, so a little bit more isolated. They're both surrounded by connective tissue. Here you can see the uh, AV nodes are connecting to bundle fibers for the bundles of his, and so that could be you know, maybe a hint, but they're a little bit more spread out, isolated than uh, SA nodes. All right, bundles of his. This is the only picture we've gotten of these. It was in the lab, and I, you know, it's right here, uh, and it's supposed to run parallel along the or margin of the septum um, membranesum. And again, remember the septum membranesum is part of our uh, our skeleton of the, the cardiac skeleton, right? So this part right here, um, which goes into the AV septum, right? It's extending downwards here. And so we know that the Purkinje fibers are going to be going down this as well, um, or the Purkinje fibers right here, excuse me, the bundle of his is going to be going from, we have SA node, AV node, from AV node down the uh, atrial ventricular septum. And so it would make sense that it's adjacent to the septum membranesum, all right? But they are larger than nodal cells um, and they have fewer myofibrils than typical cardiac cells, all right? They also have automaticity. Um, so how would you ID this? I think that the answer is going to have to be knowing, like, what is it next to, right? Is it next to a whole lot of cardiac skeleton? The answer is yes, then this is probably bundle of his. All right, so that's the end. That was super long, um, but hopefully thorough. Uh, good job, guys.